What's going on, y'all? Greetings and salutations. It's your boy Funny Smells here, and after hearing all of the hype, seeing all of the good reviews, after all the pressure, I finally got to watch an Invincible, and man, I gotta say it is easily one of the best animated comic book shows out right now. If you're on a fence about it or waiting to see it, I highly recommend it. I'm new to this review thing, so it won't really be as in depth as some others are. I'm just giving my immediate reaction because I just binged watched all of it. If you haven't seen it yet, you should probably click off and come back after watching it because I'm immediately jumping into some spoilers. So I'll give you a couple seconds. All right, boom. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. Okay, so immediately off the top, this dude, Omni-Man, is fucking crazy, bro. Like, that first episode was one of the best beginnings of a show I have seen in some time. That ending, when all the guardians of the globe got called into the hideout, only to find out that it was a setup by Omni-Man, I was not ready for that scene. Before we get into what happened with that, let's go back to how they effectively set this scene up with the uh, brief interaction they had in the beginning when Omni-Man had showed up when they were fighting buff Osmosis Jones and his clones. So when that like ending that. happened, I was like thinking that. like, damn, somebody controlling them or something? But then I saw how he he punched oh, at a mortal guy in the gut and I was like, nah, that's some personal shit right there. He punched the chicken nuggets out that man's body. I found it hilarious that the, the dude named Immortal Man or Immortal, he, he died twice. I thought that was just hilarious to me. But uh, him killing the Guardians provided the best introduction to a character. This scene set the tone for the rest of the show because from this point on, the series is gripped with a sense of tension and that grip is never loosened until Omni-Man flies away at the end. Every time you see Omni-Man after this scene, your butt cheeks are clenched up. You feel like he killed somebody every time you see this man. Like, that was such an effective beginning. A, uh, another uh, aspect that I love that was shown in this uh, the first episode, the fights really go down in this show. And what I mean by that is that when you see people with the superpowers fight, like we expect to see some results of those superpowers being used. You know, like in those shows, somebody got, uh, let's say they have fire powers and they shoot a fireball at somebody. Poof, poof fire that's me making fireball sound effects you stupid and then like they'll shoot the fireballs at somebody and they just get up with a scratch on their cheek talking about some ah you got me good with that one and i'm and i'm like bro what or like uh in the marvel avengers animated shows when i see the, when i see the incredible hawk punch somebody in their ribs or face and they get back up stop the cap <laughs> what like, I don't care how much he will be holding back. If the Hulk punches you, especially a normal person, you should die. Fold in half and your inside should look like a bowl of soggy cereal. But in Invincible? Nah, f*** that. This dude Omni-Man slapped somebody so hard that their upper body twisted around like Mr. Fantastic. The best example of this was uh, that big brawl that happened at uh, Machine Head's office when Titan brought Mark in uh, and then Machine Head brought all those goons in and they started to throw down with the new Guardians. By the end of that fight, Invincible was half dead with his ribs caved in. Monster Girl had half her face crushed in. Black Samson had an arm ripped off and his face was beat in. I thought he was dead. Like there was a sense of realism with the use of those superpowers in this show, if that makes sense. Uh, the characters, the characters. I loved, I loved the characters. Uh, it's very important to have a likable MC for me to enjoy and uh, an entire cast of likable characters we have a solid foundation. So uh, Mark was relatable to the point that uh, one of the first things he did after becoming a hero was saying, you know, fuck you to this job and quitting. He was, he was learning how to handle that balancing act of being a hero and being a normal student. The Peter Parker effect, that's what I like to call it. Patented, copyrighted, it's not. I liked Amber too. She was really grounded in reality, helping out in the inner cities, feeding the less fortunate. She finds out- What? She finds out that uh, Mark is invincible before he tells her because she's not stupid. And I love that. Like one thing I'd be questioning in the uh, other superhero shows, like how the hell do these people not be finding out that their friend is the hero? Like it would literally, like it would literally just be them and the 
the villain and their friend would disappear and the hero would pop up sounding and looking just like their friend beat up the villain and then come back you know out of disguise and they're like where were you man you missed it superhero savior man was just here and they'd be like oh i just went to the bathroom real quick I'm like what the bathroom what do you mean uh rex uh rex made me laugh that dude made me laugh he he was a funny dude he he ended up cheating on eve uh with with the duplicate and i was like damn but she can duplicate though <laughs> uh alan the alien he was funny too i uh, i found out that he was voiced by seth rogan so that explains that but uh he was hilarious when he was supposed to go to urath and not earth that that made me laugh uh oh and when he uh when him and uh mark was scrapping he was like are you the same dude i fought years ago and mark was like nah that ain't me and he was like well <laughs> sucks to be you battle beast i like battle beast because uh battle beast was the one that left invincible samson and monster girl all basically almost dead that dude just came looking for smoke and problems like he came looking for the situation so he can solve it he came looking for a fight and god damn it they tried to give him one but i like battle beast he, he was a problem he was a problem damien dark blood <laughs> damien dark blood was one of my top favorite characters on this show mainly because he reminded me of bro man from martin what are you doing in my house I was about to ask y'all the same question. Ain't y'all supposed to be at work? The lack of fucks given by this dude was amazing, bro. Like, no matter who or what was going on in your house, if there was some investigating to be done, he's gonna be in there getting it done. This dude ain't care. And he did all this while Omni-Man was home, bro. He don't give a damn. He a cold piece. Even when Omni-Man showed up and threatened him, dude was like, so what you gonna do? Kill me? I ain't stopping to the point where even all Omni Man can do was just say, man, fuck off. But easily, easily, one of my favorite characters who made me laugh the hardest in this show was Machine Head. This man right here, bro, the auto tune just made everything he said 10 times more hilarious. The way this man told his partner to shut the hell up. I said, shut the hell up. Oh, it put tears in my eyes. And he told Titan he was gonna grind him up <laughs> and, and use him to pave his driveway oh man i was dying i was dying cecil was that dose of reality character who was kind of like nick fury i liked him because of the real perspectives he brought to these situations like when he suspected that omni man was the one that killed the guardians he immediately started working on countermeasures to deal with them knowing that 99 percent of what they have won't work on this man he even went to the extremes of enhancing a monster that Omni-Man had fought but struggled against and I'm like man that's some real shit because what else do you do like what do you do this isn't a hypothetical oh what if he snaps he is snapping he's snapping right now he's snapping like I know I'm missing a lot of them but I want to keep it relatively short and she can duplicate uh, the premise. Uh, so I love that nothing was left in the air or up to interpretation. We got our answers. Like imagine that Superman was evil and was on a mission to conquer Earth. And instead of his, instead of Krypton being destroyed and him being the only survivor, his planet instead cut the population in half so that only the strongest remain. And they were on a mission to expand an empire across the universe by conquering planets. Yeah, that type shit. We find out that Omni-Man killed the Guardians because he's a part of this uh, planet conquering alien race of the Viltrums. I'm saying that right uh they're building this intergalactic empire and they were expanding to different planets and omni man was sent to earth to basically weaken it to prep for the takeover Are you going to get down or you going to lay down uh i love this i loved it mainly because when this gets revealed everything that omni man was teaching mark makes a lot more sense he kept reiterating to mark that as a viltrum he has a responsibility that requires a lot of sacrifice and that he must put this above everything everything else no matter what he begins acting cold towards debbie lion tour he becomes hostile towards everyone and begins to shred away that humanity that he built up with the development of his family the final episode was everything that it needed to be at this point you couldn't find a single fuck for omni man to give even if you had a fuck ball radar the entire episode is this confrontation in between invincible and omni man but invincible is torn because his immediate thought was somebody's controlling his father his father is being controlled but he's not 
And that pain, that pain is felt through the entire duration. Omni-Man wants to teach Invincible the truth. And uh, let's just state the obvious. This dude Omni-Man is ruthless and savage. He can be the spokesperson for his own candy bar, the Ruthless Savage Bar. Instead of a baby Ruth, we get an Omni Ruthless. When you look on the back of the package for the amount of fucks per serving, it says zero. That train scene, that damn train scene, bro. This dude Omni-Man held Invincible up in front of a train and made him watch everyone on that train die just to teach him how futile it is. English! Damn, I, I, I sped past that. How futile it is for everyone to oppose Viltrum. He kills good. Uh, he kills a good portion of the city just to show how fragile the humans are and why they need to be a part of the Viltrum Empire. And during the entire episode, Omni Man is just whooping Invincibles' ass, bro. It's like a solid 20 minutes of ass whooping, and I loved it. This dude beat the teeth out Invincible mouth, and you feel it. Even during all of this, the physical pain that Invincible was going through is still second to the emotional pain that he feels what's 17 more years i can always start again make another kid <laughs> seeing his father slaughter the people that he promised and sacrificed to protect hearing his father say that he only loved his mother as a pet hearing him say that there's nothing on this planet worth fighting for because you're going to live to see it all crumble and die eventually and pushing through the pain, holding on to those memories as a family. And Vincent, with his face beat to a pulp, still looks up at Omni-Man, no, at Nolan Grayson, and says, Are you that? I still have you. Man! And after seeing what he's done, Omni-Man flies away with tears in his eyes as he leaves Earth. And at last, I was finally able to unclench my cheeks, god damn. Yeah, man, this show was amazing. Yes, there was closure at the end, but now we know that this ain't over. When the other Viltrums find out that Omni-Man abandoned Earth, I'm in danger. Each episode was like 43 minutes, but it flew by like it was only 20. Like I highly recommend that all of you fire up that free trial on Amazon Prime and get the binging. It's definitely worth your time. I knew it was a good show because it had me making the uh, the stank face all the way through. Now there's actually a lot of stuff I left out to save a bit of time. You know, Titan becoming a mob boss. The robot freed a criminal from prison to help him make a body for himself and then put them right back into prison on some gangster shit. A lot of the other stuff I left out, but I'll do that for everyone else. This is just my immediate reaction. And if you enjoy the review, again, I'm new at this. Don't forget to leave a like. Consider subscribing. I got some anime reviews coming to the channel soon and comment below did you have your cheeks clenched all the way through the whole show can omni man beat superman who you got in that fight what do you think happens in season two because you know season two and season three got confirmed that's how good this show was who was your favorite character let's talk down in the comments but i do think that the most important takeaway from all of this is the fact that she can duplicate